Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. So there's been just so many interesting things going on, a lot of weird things going on this week, but <clears throat> we've been talking a lot in depth about the situation playing out with TFL, the courts, the SEC, South Korea, the extraditions, everything. Now I've been saying to people, it's just a matter of time until they all begin to throw each other under the bus. We're starting to see this happen. We're starting to see testifications from actual employees who are part of the lead development team back before the crash. So like I said, it's only a matter of time until they all start to throw each other under the bus to get shorter sentences to save their own necks. I call this 5x5 five five treatment. Specifically, anybody who is sitting in a 5x5 five five room, uh, each wall painted the same colour, it's not going to take long before they crack you, so to speak. You'd probably sell uh, your friends out for a slice of cheese at that point, if I'm being quite frank here. There's something else I want to go through in this video, and I want to explain to everybody why this is such a bullish thing. Why, if we utilise this correctly, if we get ourselves in order, in line, and we look at all of the different things that are actually plaguing our chain and where the true centralization lies and where it realistically shouldn't, and it's becoming a very damaging thing that's only benefiting a few individuals, like I said. So let's dive straight into this. Okay, so let's take a look at this report firstly coming through the news routers. Former Terraform Lab dev testifies against Du Quan. A former developer at Terraform Labs known only as Lee reportedly took the stand on Monday at the 14th Criminal Division of Seoul Southern District Court, testifying against Du Quan and Daniel Shin. The witness, formerly a leader within the Terra development team, provided crucial testimony against Terra founder Du Quan and Terraform Labs co-founder uh, Shin. Uh, I say Daniel Shin because this is Daniel Shin. I'm going to be just saying Du Quan and Dan uh, Shin for short moving forward. Uh, according to a local media outlet report, Lee testified that in a discussion with Kwon himself, who had acknowledged that South Korean financial regulations prohibited using Terra USD as a payment method, suggesting Terra executives were aware of the stablecoin's regulatory constraints. Lee's testimony also shed light on Terra's operational strategy, which sought to establish Luna as a viable currency via the Chai Pay payment system. This model projected potential profits linked to the anticipated appreciation of Luna's token value. So there are some issues with the defense challenges testimony. However, the defense team representing Daniel Shin challenged the accuracy of Lee's statements disputing his claims regarding Quan and Shin's awareness of impossibility of terror payments. They emphasized discrepancies between Lee's assertions and the presented facts, suggesting a more complex narrative than portrayed. <clears throat> The prosecution's case is based on the assertion that Daniel Shin and members of the tariff organization collaborated with Quan and others to realize profits through fraudulent means by falsely promoting the Terra project from July 2018 to May 2022. So this is all really interesting stuff. And like I said, this, this all could be very bullish for our blockchain, but we've got a few underlying issues. Like I said, we're going to need to go through these issues. We're going to need to look at the different discrepancies. <clears throat> so let's jump straight over to coin market cap because this is where we're going to get a lot of the information that we're looking for. And like I said, this could all be a really bullish thing for our blockchain and it's all down to how it's utilized mo moving forward and how we react. And more or less, it's going to be a damage control thing going forward. If anyone thinks it's not going to be a damage control thing going forward, it's 100% going to be unless we do a total rebrand. So if you look down here at the official links and socials, it all leads to TFL's infrastructure. The more interesting part of all of this is, for me, is the Telegram. <clears throat> if you join the Telegram, they'll say to you, we don't talk about LUNC here. They actually have the, the words logged to send specific responses, and it gives you two specific Telegram groups stating these are the the official lanes, the official groups you should go and join if you're interested in Luna Classic. And these two links provided are one for Terraport um, <clears throat> being TC Vita's uh, groups and the other uh, being Vegas's groups. 
Now, like I said, this is where centralization through bottlenecks is very damaging because every single new person that buys Luna Classic externally and then tries to find a group to get involved with, they're sent to one of two places. Okay, because they're going to come to Coin Market Cap where every person goes to when they buy a new coin. They're going to check the official website. They're going to check the white paper. They're going to check the GitHub. They're going to check the Twitter. They're going to check the Telegram. They're going to try find groups to find more people they're talking with. And that's just the way the cookie crumbles. And the sad part is, right, this has actually been going on for some time, this centralization through a bottleneck, and it's all been very well hidden. And I don't normally like to point fingers at people, but like I said, we're getting to a point now where we've got all of these different things going on, like I said, all of these different things, and it could all be a, a huge bullish indicator for our blockchain, because ultimately, right, the more Luna throws each other under the bus, the more TFL throw each other under the bus, the better it looks for us, because suddenly we're not the chain fighting amongst ourselves. Suddenly, we're not the ones that have got all of these issues, because it is not going to be us moving forward. Like I said, as they start to throw each other under the bus, and by God, they're doing it. They're doing it, and DK's not even got to America yet, and it's already happening. So people are going to try to save their own skins in this issue. And that's just what it's going to boil down to when it comes bite to crunch on these things. So like I said, it could be bullish, right? But we've got to figure this out. I think we're getting to a point now where nobody should control the website. If there's an official website, nobody should control it. Absolutely nobody. It should all be subject to governance. Being the repository which contains everything for the website. Okay, and then it's only changeable via official governance. And then the same with the Telegram group, right? We've got all of this amazing technology, all of these bots and artificial intelligence, right? And we're not even trying to use and utilize it to benefit ourselves. So as this case rolls on, as they start to throw each other under the bus, how do we make ourselves look good? Right? Well, we start by correcting our image instead of seeing these come up and thinking to ourselves, well, you know, this is a really bad thing for us. No, let's look at the positives. Let's look at the, the ways we can take this and use it to our benefit. And the only way for us to do that is to get the house in order. Like I said, get all of the official links here changed and figured out. And what scares me the most with CMC is the USTC supply is a lie. Um, it says that there's 1 billion less in the circulating supply, but that's not true. A lot of you have been tricked into thinking that wallet's blacklisted. It's not. Okay. It's not. The blacklist does not exist. It doesn't exist. Right. So you, you tell me, where does this leave us with everything? Right? This shows that there's some weird gatekeeping happening with CMC and someone right, has the ability to simply go to them and say, do you know what? I've told you the circulating supply is 1 billion lower than it is. You change it because I told you to do it. That's dangerous. The fact that CMC is lying about the circulating supply is even worse. Right? And I know for a lot of people, it doesn't make much difference to us that are already in it. Right? It doesn't make much difference, but it does externally. It does to the external media, right? It does matter throughout all of this court case because USTC is going to come up in this court case and they're going to go, well, the supply's 1 billion more than you're saying it is that's circulating and that's just going to be a factor played into it and it's going to be something that's tied into our community. So like, so like I said, we have to start doing damage control now. We have to start figuring this out. We've got 65 days until the halving event. And I don't want to see us at a point, right, through the halving vent where two specific people who are building third, third party systems to the actual chain themselves are the ones benefiting from it. None of these people should be the official groups. And when that happened, right, even if TFL did that on their own account, they should have gone to them and said, hey, look, you know, this isn't we're not the official and, you know, this is kind of centralizing things for a bottleneck. So we kind of get all of the new holders. But that's not the game, is it? Right. And this is what I say to people about Astroport. The game is not to fix Astroport for all of these third party apps that are plaguing our system. Because the simple fact is, is if we get swapping back on chain, people aren't going to go and look at all of these third party apps. They're simply just going to use the swapping features on chain where you keep all of your LUNC, 
But like I said, that's not the game, is it, folks? That's not the game. The game is to ensure this chain has nothing. Ensure it has nothing, ensure it gains no, no new holders, and ensure that every single person that comes a look in, comes a peep in, eventually is just siphoned off to your third party app. And that's the difference between who's building and who's not building for this chain. Other than that, folks, like I said, we if we learn to use and utilize this news correctly and we get rid of all of these silly centralized bottlenecks that are truly centralized bottlenecks where it matters, where it counts, where some in a department where that doesn't need to happen. All right, but let me know what you folks think. Okay, let me know what you think. Don't forget to chuck comments down, drop a like, drop a sub. Um, Patreon links below. We're working on a lot of different stuff, a lot of different perks you can get access to just by joining up there. Don't forget about the giveaway 10,000 USTC, 1 million LUNC to the top three commenters every month. Other than that, folks, stay safe, stay humble, stay aware. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Shoo!